So a couple of weeks ago, when the utility company came to install the poles, they were able to put in two of the electrical poles, but not the one here. They couldn't put in that third pole. That was because they hit ledge. There was some ledge in the other spots as we expected, but here the ledge was right on the surface and it was super, super hard. So they said we will reschedule to come back with a dedicated ledge drilling truck with the right equipment on to drill through this ledge. About seven o'clock this morning, we had an email from the utility company saying, good news. We found an opening in the schedule and the ledge drilling truck will be with you this morning at about nine o'clock. <laughs> Fortunately, we were already planning to head up into the forest anyway, so we were up and about, ready to go. So we got some work done up there, clearing a, a tree that we felled over the weekend. And then about nine o'clock, we heard the, the trucks arrive. So we came down to see what they're up to. And they were here at the site of pole number two with the it's a third party company they use to drill the holes through the ledge. And they were already starting to drill. They were, they were making great progress. The ledge drilling machine is pretty impressive. It's basically a giant like hammer drilling thing on a big boom on the back of the truck. It's uh, powered by air pressure and a big pneumatic hammer basically that uh, hammer drill that goes in. I think in total they were here about half an hour. As the, the drill goes into the ledge, it creates a load of dust. And the harder the ledge, the more dust you get. And we had a ton of dust. So the ledge here must have been super, super hard, which is kind of unusual because down at the, the bottom of the driveway and at the top of the driveway, where we've done some digging on the ledge already, it's actually been pretty soft. We haven't really run into too many problems. It's splintered nicely. And you can even see where the excavator is kind of clawed at the ledge, it digs in. But for whatever reason, right here, the ledge was super hard. Uh, it took the drill maybe about 20 something minutes to get through, 20 minutes or so. Uh, so it really did work the drill pretty hard to dig a six foot hole here. That is a really solid six foot deep hole through solid rock. Once they had dug the hole out, the ledge truck was able to pull out of the way and move forward and the utility truck came in with a big boom. So once they've got the pole into the hole in the ground, they have to rotate it the right way around. And that's because there are certain things already on the pole, particularly the holes you can see at the top. And those have to be oriented in the right direction to meet the, the wires and the other attachments that go on. So there's another pole down that way, and there's another pole up that way. And so you can see them doing this thing with their arms where they, they line up those two wires and then close their arms to get kind of the midpoint between those two and that's what they're trying to target some of those holes being aligned with either directly on that or perpendicular to that. So then once the pole is rotated the right direction the next thing to do is get it completely plumb and there's no special modern tech involved here just a couple of plumb lines 90 degrees to each other to make sure that everything is lined up and that pole is absolutely dead plumb.
Uh, rotate that way. Yep. Except in this case, they didn't want it completely level. They actually lent it back slightly. So it's kind of leaning back away from me um, right now, just by a couple of degrees. And that is called rake. The reason for that is that the wires, when they connect in, are actually going to form like a V on the front. It's not a, a perfect straight line that it's on here. So those two wires will actually pull the pole slightly forward. Now there will be anchors on here. So there'll be wires coming down to an anchor that will be embedded in concrete in the ground, which will hold it back. But even so, that slight sort of rearward rake is really just designed to counteract the force of those two wires on the front. So once they'd got the pole in, they'd got it oriented the correct way and they'd got it to the right, not quite levelness or not quite plumbness, uh, just off by a couple of degrees. Then they backfilled the hole with all of that dust using a shovel. They just shovel that back in and then they have this awesome air tamper, which is basically like a uh, handheld tamper, but rather than doing it by hand, it's pneumatic powered and it just vibrates this, um, kind of like a hammer head at the bottom to really pack those things, uh, that dust and that dirt and that debris, pack it down real tight into the hole, locking this pole in solid. So a couple of things, none of these poles have any concrete in them. They are just in the hole and then backfilled. And they also don't have any sleeves on them. So one thing that you may have seen some people do when they put a post into the ground in uh, areas prone to frost, they'll put a sleeve around the post or the pole. And that's so that the frost heave can't grip onto the pole and lift it up as the frost itself moves up. In this case, they, what they do is they calculate how deep to go. And for solid rock like this, they'll actually go to six feet deep, which is a couple of feet normal, a couple of feet deeper than they would normally go. But by going to six feet, they do two things. One, they don't need any kind of concrete or anything like that to, to really lock it in because they're into solid rock. Second, they don't need the sleeve because they're through below that cross line into an area where it's going to be secure and then packed in really tight. So none of the poles have concrete in. They're just packed back into that hole with dirt. But when the anchors go in, they will be hammered into the ground again with a pneumatic tool, kind of like drills a hole in for them. And uh, the anchors will be set in concrete to really make sure they are locked solid. So right now, the, uh, the pole is in. The truck didn't stick around to install the anchors today. They kind of work uh, in partnership with a ledge drilling truck when it's available. So they had to head straight off to do another job. But hopefully in the next couple of weeks, they'll be back to install the anchors. We still have some trees to clear. So we cleared the trees that are directly around the poles. But as you look up the driveway here, all of these trees along this side, a lot of those will need to be cleared because they're going to be in the way of the actual wire that goes up. So we need to clear anything that will be within 10 feet of the, the wire as it goes up, which is a lot of trees here. So we've got some work to be done here. They can't install the wire until we've done that all the way up the driveway. So uh, one of the things on our to-do list now is to, uh, to clear some trees here. But getting the poles in is a great milestone to have reached. It's something that uh, now it's done. We just don't have to worry about it. They're not gonna be bringing that big truck up to, to set poles anymore. And uh, yeah, progress is being made.